What's good YouTube? Barcode here. Today I'm bringing another Dungeon Hunter Champions video. This video is going to be about my underrated champ number four, Fire Valkyrie, which is Hildir. 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 I never say it right, so I'm just not even going to try. Anyway, uh, this today's video is going to be about her, uh, mainly in where you can take her, why she is good, why is she underrated. Well, because you have Nature Valk, you have Light Valk. You have even Water Valk, Dark Valk. She's underrated. All the Valkyries, mind you, are very good. And in the future, I will have a all five Valkyrie team, six starred, farming dungeons and everything like that. That is a long time down the road, but that is one of my plans because all five together, even though they kind of triple stack an attack speed buff, uh, still are gonna be pretty OP in dungeons and that's where I'm kinda going with that anyway so fire Valk uh, she is very good she you know all the Valkyries what they can do um, their attack speak they are attack speed nukers so there's a couple different ways you can build them and I'll explain that in the future but let's go over her skills everybody knows zap third attack balances to a maximum of four targets so attack speed more times they hit and the more times you do AoE damage. Thunderbolt, now with this, this is typically a armor break on like Light Valkyrie, for say, because that's what I compare Fire Valk to, is the Light Valk. They're pretty much comparable, except one is Light, one is Fire. Light does armor break, Fire does disorient. Now, you could say that Light Valk, which I think so, is probably the best Valkyrie out of all of them because of that armor break and she can be a farmer because of that armor break. Uh, Fire Valk, she has Disorient, so there is places where this is actually useful and it's going to be in Elder Drake uh, or Steel Widow. Having an, a lower attack on her last skill and also a Disorient pretty much uh, disables any damage output from the enemy. So those two combined stacked on a enemy, they're not going to be hitting hard at all. Uh, tornado, everybody knows Tornado, it's just a, a big nuke, pushes enemies back, which is great for um, a ranged character. And then this one is the AoE Aura, which is lowers attack, and that hits actually really hard. Um, as you can see, every skill is based off attack speed, so you definitely want to build an attack speed. Uh, now, what I am testing currently is, and I'll have, I'm going to have to wait for a free gear removal to test it a little bit more in depth. Um, but I have her on a attack speed, crit damage, HP build uh, to give her a little bit more tankiness and not be so squishy. Uh, so I feel like she still puts out amazing damage on HP in her bracer. Uh, and she has crit damage here and then attack speed here. These are five star gears so she has room to improve. And these are just, I mean, the subs aren't really too great. I'm, I was mainly focused on crit rate, attack speed, and crit damage. Once I get better gear that has all four attack, attack speed, crit, crit damage, she can be a boss. And, and everybody knows how hard Valkyries can hit. Um, so you can kind of imagine what she can do. Um, so skill gear-wise, right now I have her on mortal and crit rate. So... Um, she has pretty decent crit damage, 177, and that's with crappy gear in my opinion, um, and crappy subs, okay, because it's there's hardly any other crit damage except for one of uh, my helmet, This has 15 crit damage, so total room to improve. Um, she is max build, uh, max skilled. A couple different ways you could actually gear her, like Mortal, for example, you could build her vampire and actually have her as a farmer. Um, she wouldn't be as good as Light Valk just because of the lack of armor break. Um, but um, if you don't have Light Valk built, which I don't uh, because I am different, uh, you can still put her on vamp and still prosper from that. Um, Another idea that I am actually thinking about is putting it her on Dazzling uh, because of this AoE skill. Um, and if you have her arena, she's lowering attack, she's uh, stunning on Dazzling with all of her skills. Uh, it could be very beneficial. Also, you could put her on Adept, so she just has, uh, using more nukes, more skills in a quicker amount of time. Obviously, Adept is good on 
mostly everybody. Not everybody, mostly everybody, and I talked about that in the past. So currently I have her on a H like attack speed, crit damage HP, as I explained. She has about 37k HP, 1070 attack. Uh, attack speed is low, it's because I don't have good attack subs uh, or 6 star gear, so it's 0.74 added on to attack speed. Crit damage is pretty good, crit rate I want to improve on. Um, but I am going to show you where you can use her, what she can be good for, and Hopefully you take my advice. All right, let's start out with uh, Legend 6-1, um, which is pretty much the best place you can farm currently uh, because Board 7 has the same amount of experience as Board 6 does. Um, she's not on vamp, so if she does take damage, it, you know she won't be doing much. Uh, but she, the problem with her as a farmer um, is she doesn't have armor break. So like like Valk for example he has armor break and just the damage output is going to be so much stronger. So I wouldn't really recommend her as a farmer for 6-1 which is the best place you can go. But if you do like 110 which I'll run a quick 110 which a lot of free to play players are you know farming because they, they can't get up to 6-1 yet. Um, or I'll try something lower as well um, and I can show you where she can do but she's just not an efficient farmer um, n even on vamp um, because of that armor break if you don't have armor break kind of a, a lackluster farmer all right so here's fire Valk on legend 110 now I didn't build her at all for farming at all but I'm just showing you you know the possibilities of what she can do as a farmer um, and she can do this in about 20 seconds I think it is or roughly give or take but um, yeah I mean for for a farmer which I didn't even build her for a farmer because um, you can use other ones that are just as good um, but she does a job and she's not on vampire so you don't have if you don't have vampire or whatever the case may be you don't have a good set for Valkyrie um, it's a good possibility that you can use um, you know legend 110 doesn't give too much experience it's uh, what is it 2400 uh, but you know it still can be done um, but her strength isn't really farming it's the other things that she can bring all right let's start out with steel widow steel widow 10 um, now I showed this in a previous video about what she can do um, however I'm just going to show you uh, the damage output and what she brings to the table. Uh, I'm not going to bring Dark TK today. Why not? Because, you know, that's pretty OP. Um, so I'm going to bring just some random stuff um, that I can bring, you know, that everybody has. I'll do Xenia um, in a Fire Valk. Uh, I'm going to do maybe like a Zircon because everybody does Zircon. Um, and then. I will bring, uh, well, everybody builds a Manus, so I'm just going to bring one Dark Timekeeper, okay, but yeah, Xenia is doing the strips, okay, don't even, just ignore that the Dark TK does strips, I don't have a, man, uh, a Manus, so I didn't, I had I had one in, in the past, but then I fed him to Dark TK, so, um, and then, you know, for example, I will bring, um, just for just for giggles, water snake because that's what she does. So the thing here, and I'll use the water timekeeper's leader skill. The thing with that fire valk is great for in steel widow is the uh, the lasers are not going to do any damage whatsoever. Um, she's also the speed clear for the waves, so all the damage that she's doing and putting out is mainly in the waves uh, when you get to the boss her disorient and her lower attack is what keeps the team safe and they do what they can do okay uh, so let's go ahead and start this all right so what we got here let's focus on fire valk she doesn't have any buffs she doesn't have attack speed she doesn't have uh the attack up so i mean she's still putting out I mean, 13,000 damage on her tornado with no attack speed and no attack buff. Okay, so pretty good damage, um, and it's a, it's a great wave clear. I mean, we're already on. I think this is the third or fourth wave, 26 seconds in, and we're just doing fine. So, um, and no worries here. Uh, when we get to the boss, her main objective is to land the lower attack and land the disorient, and then just do some extra damage. Um, it, she is a nuker but with tons and tons of support 
Um, so, you know, with Zenia Armor Break um, and, you know, Timekeeper putting up dots, she can be that third person that gets you into a little bit faster speed clears. Now, this isn't my type of speed clear um, because I can do mine in like a minute and five, a minute and ten, something like that. But uh, just giving other people examples of what they can use if they're having trouble getting to this point and lasers are one-shotting their characters, whatever the case may be, uh, because she can be used in other many places as well. Um, but And I do use her in my speed team with Water Valk, two Dark Timekeepers, and a Water Siege. So um, they put up really good damage, really good numbers. Um, and I'll show you the numbers after this. But this is just a good example. A minute 35, a minute, what is it going to be, a minute 39 or something at the end with, you know, a bunch of nat 3s and nat 4s. I'd say that's pretty good um, uh, depending on where you are in progression in this point of the game. Uh, so let's go ahead and check the numbers on the Fire Valk. And 389,000. A lot of it was probably in the wave phase. Um, and then Dark Timekeeper and Water Snake did their thing during the boss. Um, but um, still, I mean, top the damage and lower attack, disorient, it's just great to have. So definitely need some attack speed, definitely need some crit damage and some accuracy for Fire Valk in order for her to shine. All right, let's bring our girl into Elder Drake 10. Now, typically you don't bring Fire Champs into water. However, a lot of people get one-shotted and have issues with the Elder Drake. So with the lower attack and the disorient, Fire Valk actually does pretty well in Elder Drake 10. I don't use her personally because I obviously have other characters, uh, but I want to show you what she can do. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm leveling Amethyst to 60 while I'm at it. Um, I was using actually... Um, uh, the the fire I'm, I'm leveling fire dragon guard and I've been leveling him and the dark crystal priest in my elder Drake and I still get under a minute and 20 if I can get a pre-flight so not too bad so let's get started on this all right let's focus on fire Valk and show what she can do so even against water monsters um, when you have high crit rate yeah you have a chance to glance and, and not crit uh, against against the enemy team. Uh, but she still uh, does really well, helping clear the waves. Obviously, I have a nature BM, so she's doing just just fine there. <laughs> but um, you know, I built her for certain reasons. Uh, I had also sixth Water Valkyrie, which was my last underrated champion. Um, and with Water Valk and Fire Valk combined, uh, it's just an amazing combo, just with the attack speed, the heals, uh, the the movement speed, everything like that. So, so we're on the Elder Drake. Uh, already got the Disorient up from Water Valk. I mean, from Fire Valk. So uh, that's good to know um, and good to have. Look, Fireball to Nature Pirate. Hardly does any damage, um, and I'm just, it's just she's just doing her thing. Yeah, it didn't get pre-flight um, because it looked like Water Siege didn't even put up any dots at all during that phase. I didn't even see any, um, so I don't know if the cooldown was just dead, uh, but whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so let's see if she can actually survive. So yeah, she she took some damage, um, but as the H and remember she has HP in her slot so she's not as squishy if she had attack speed crit damage attack she probably would have died there so I just gave her a little bit of survivability and the main reason I put HP on that bracer slot is because I plan on using her in um, the higher Elder Drake bosses oh there she goes but um, yeah like I said in the beginning would you typically bring fire to Elder Drake no but I'm just showing you that you could if you wanted to because you can still kill Elder Drake in two minutes and five seconds if you're at that point uh, in progression. Now this, is, this isn't this is for later teams obviously or, or mid game players because we can clear it pre-flight in our good team. So um, typically with me I don't even bring a, new, uh, a healer anymore. I'll bring Dark Timekeeper, which is like the only healer, and the heals only go into a certain direction and come back. Um, so if my champion teammates aren't standing in front of it, 
uh, they don't get healed. However, I still bring four other nukes like Kendrick, Water BM, Water Siege, and uh, I think I've been using my Nature Ink Ninja lately, and I get under like a minute and five. Um, so, you know, it works out. But I'm just showing you that obviously it can be done. Um, and still check the damage, she's still second. Um, and that's obviously the waves. So, um, yeah, it, it still works. Not recommended. All right, this is one of the main reasons why I built a Vire Valk, um, is because of that lower attack in the Sorient to land. Um, so I'm going to show you um, an Elder Drake 11 uh, that I use with Fire Valk. All right, in this Elder Drake 11, I'm going to showcase Fire Valk and how much utility she can bring, how much wave clearing she can bring, um, and it's just going to be uh, very beneficial to build her, not only for other things, but for uh, 11 and up in certain situations and Steel Widow as well. Um, her main thing is she's the wave clearer, okay? So you can bring her as a soul lane wave clearer and, you know, speed up your runs a little bit instead of taking full tanky champions with ongoing damage or whatever the case may be uh, to for safe runs anyway. Uh, bring Crystal Priest for immunity. Uh, bring Water Siege for just a bunch of dots if you have dark fox or if you have dark snake or water snake or whatever the case may be that's you're going to be your extra ongoing damage um, and then there's dark timekeeper for the cooldown reduction and also um, for the strip to remove the attack buff from the dragon um, and to lower everybody else's cooldowns with his passive and then you have mojo for the defense buff and the attack buff to speed up the wave clears so let's go ahead and get that going all right, Hunter Drake 11, let's focus on Fire Valk since she is the key. Um, so she's got the attack buff uh, from Mojo, so she's going to clear the waves pretty quickly um, on her own. Because Water Siege, Timekeeper, they're, they're not doing much wave clear damage. They're, they're mainly for the boss to get the Elder Drake down quicker. Um, from my experience, though, ongoing damage is actually... Uh, the benefit from it, like an Elder Drake 10 and Steel Widow 10, is huge. It just seems like the, the Widow and the Drake's HP go down fairly quickly on 5, 6, or 7, or even 10 stacks. Um, in 11 and up, it seems like the ongoing damage uh, percentage is actually lowered. I don't know if it's actually been stated by Game Loft or not, if they did that. Um, but it definitely can tell a difference on ongoing damage. Um, so I, I, in my opinion, I think nuke runs is actually with some defense buff and lower attack and disorient is going to be much more feasible. Um, so that's why I built Fire Valk for the future is for 11 and up uh, because she brings so much utility along with her. So we have, and we have lower attack, we have lower speed, we have uh, disorient on this team. Um, we have defense buff, attack buff, and we have ongoing damage, and everyone is somewhat tanky. I have some five stars in there. If you six star them, it's going to be even more safe. But if, as you can see, there's always a disorient, there's always a lower attack, or there's a, always a um, lower attack speed on the Drake. And that can be huge uh, to mitigate the damage that's taken out um, onto your allies. Um, and it's all about survivability right now, um, especially if you don't kill it pre-flight. Um, you know, you just need the survivability. If they're going to stand and derp like that, <laughs> um, it's going to be an issue, just like you saw. Um, but yeah, and actually, I think actually a, a monster got in her way. Um, you can rewind that and check that out. But see, now that you don't have a lower attack, you um, still have Disorient from the Water Siege, but um, we don't have the lower attack, so it, it's it's painful to watch. But I'm still going to kill it um, even with two people down. So, um, but getting through that first phase, um, that helped it. And just, you know, sometimes that might fail, sometimes it might not. Um, but that's how that's Elder Drake 11 is done uh, and I, I take full credit with the fire valve uh, doing her thing and lowering the attack at least for the first part because as you can see it went it went clean until the air phase 
and then Fire Valk wanted to run through the, the bleh, and then and she did, she did. But look at that damage. Um, you know, all of it's not even on the waves. You know, that's actually that's that's boss damage too for sure. Um, but then there's Water Siege and Dark Time Keeper doing their thing. Um, but two minutes forty four seconds for eleven. Not a speed clear at, at, at all, but still got it done. Am I enjoying Dungeon Hunting Champions? Don't you hate that this thing is like non-stop? I clicked yes, I clicked later, I clicked no. It's, it just keeps coming back, and yes, I've already rated it. Okay, so leave me alone, alright? Alright, so let's go into PvP. Uh, she can be used in many different team comps uh, that can be beneficial uh, to all your teams. I mean, she's your nuke, but she is also a little bit safety net with the attack break if somebody melee comes into the into the back line. Uh, so you want to run her probably with not just her as a back line, but either one or two people in the back line, and then uh, one or two people in the front line to kind of mix out the two. All right, let's go ahead and start with Bean. So Bean here uh, has Light Archangel, so she got Shield, Silence, whatever. Uh, Diva, everybody knows Diva, best heals per second number healer in the game. Uh, then you have Dark Dryad with the cleanse and the heal, and then Xenia with the armor break, the cooldown reduction, and the heal as well. So with here, you don't see uh, immunity, you see cleanse, so you can still maybe get a first shot out. Um, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring Fire Valk so she can nuke down. Hopefully, when Archangel comes in, nuke down the front line. Uh, I have attack break, defense break, and attack speed buff to buff the whole team. So the synergy wise of this nuke team, which you can only bring this nuke team when there's no immunity or no Archangel of, uh, invulnerability. Um, but you can kind of use this against the tankier non-immunity teams. Alright, let me get my gather my controls here for PC because I hate it. Anyway, alright, so I'm gonna dash in with Blade Master and do her thing and then we'll see what we got. So Fire Valk and Water Valk's doing their thing. Uh, they're doing their thing. Let's focus on her. Alright, they're dead, they're dead, and they're dead. Okay. If you didn't notice this, uh, if you didn't know this as well in Arena, you can actually solo target somebody. Um, just by clicking on them and everybody will focus on them uh, which is great for arena offense um, but yeah so I mean that's what can be done just a full new team when you don't have immunity or invincibility um, I'll just show you the damage that was output uh, it's gonna be nature BM all the way but fire valk on attack speed crit damage and HP she still puts out 146 damage um, and that's what I, I want to test on free gear removal um, how attack speed champions uh, can correlate with attack or HP if you even need attack on the bracer um, I'm sure it would boost up the damage a little bit more but then you lose out on um, survivability so that's something in the future on the next free gear removal day um, but as you can see fire Valk did extreme amount of damage so that's my underrated champion number four, the Fire Valkyrie. If you have any comments, criticisms, questions, please feel free to comment below in the video. Uh, in my opinion, she is great in the majority of the areas in this game and the content that's provided. Um, and there's only more room to improve with gear and in future content. Um, but I feel like every single Valkyrie is amazing, uh, but I feel like Fire Valkyrie is the most underrated one because no one talks about her. Um, everybody's all about the Light Valkyrie, uh, the Nature Valkyrie, and a lot of people don't talk about it. I've already talked about Water. Some people love Dark Valkyrie too, and she's actually another great Valkyrie too, and I'll have her build up eventually, uh, but I wanted to showcase Fire Valk because that's what I do. I like to find champions that other people do not. Um, so please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll check you out in the next video. Peace.